Oh, hey there. Ready to go on an adventure? Trust me, it's gonna be fun. Let's go. What's going on all my fellow bait chuckers out there? So today we're taking you on an adventure. Eric and I, what's up Eric? We're headed to the ISE, the International Sportsman's Expo in Sacramento, California. It's at the Cal Expo Center, Cal right? Cal Expo. Cal Expo. So it's fishing, hunting. There's like an RV section. Hopefully there's like a boat section. I know they got the big fish tank. There should be some other local kind of Delta YouTube fishermen out there and it's going to be a good time. Let's go get it. All right, so we made it here to the expo. We're inside now. We've got our raffle tickets entered, so that's pretty cool. And uh, let's see what they got inside. People are already walking out with fishing poles and gear. You see that? It's crazy. It's crazy. So lots of good stuff. And you know, I didn't know they were going to have stuff for sale here. Did you? I, I didn't either. Yeah. This is. Uh, this could be bad for us, Mike. <laughs> this could be really bad. <laughs> We're going to be meeting Garrett, the, uh, the owner of Active Catch, and he's got some really cool 3D printed lures with some pretty interesting tech you guys all got to check out. So, Garrett, walk us through everything that, uh, that you're all about. All right, so this is my first line of production of the crankbait that I've got patent pending right now. Uh, this first design is actually a hybrid between a Strike King Sonic Slide and a Lucky Craft 2.5 Square Bill. So it's got the wobble um, like in between the two. It's not very tight, but it's not, not super dramatic. Um, the difference here is it's got a hole in the back. Um, it's got a chamber, a, uh, an air chamber in the body, and you can inject whatever soft plat, uh, whatever scent and flavor you want into it. And as you're reeling it back, it's releasing this trail scent behind it, attracting some fish, masking human scent, um, and really like grabbing the attention of anything around. Um, right now, they're all uh, manufactured in-house through my 3D printer, made to order. It's not dropped on my website, and it's not going to be dropped officially until um, we can get the mass production line going. Uh, our goal is to have the first crankbait production line in the United States. So guys, these guys will be made in the United States, not overseas, uh, one by one to order. And so every, I mean, you have the printer going over here. Every single one's 3D printed, right? Yeah, so right now, every single one is 3D printed. Um, as we're working on the prototypes, getting the, getting the word out a little bit, and it's the first drop for this show. Awesome. And you want to walk us through some of your custom paint jobs? Because these lures look amazing over here. Yeah, so over here, um, this is this is what I, custom work. Started off as a side hobby. Use Lucky Craft blanks for the most part. Um, these are also some people like custom order these guys for personal like lineup going. Um, this giving anglers something unique that's different that you don't see in the stores. Um, throw some patterns and grab the attention of other other fish. Awesome. And where, where can people find you? What's your media and all the socials? Yeah, so you can find me uh, mainly on Instagram at active underscore catch underscore uh, or my website at www.activecatch.com. Awesome. Thanks, Garrett. Appreciate Thank it, man.
It was good. I Did enjoyed you? it. A little smaller than I thought, yeah, right? I thought it was going to be a little bit bigger, but it was good. Yeah, yeah not too bad. All right, well, time to uh, make our way back to the bait cave. And uh, I don't know, we picked up a few custom lures today. We'll show those off once we get back into the cave. And uh, you never know, maybe we'll pour some plastics and do a little color matching with what we got here at the show. Hey, all right, we made it back here to the bait cave. I hope you all enjoyed coming along with us for the ride today to the International Sportsman's Expo. It was a pretty good show. I will say it was a little smaller than I think we were both expecting, but they had three big giant expo halls, uh, one specifically for fishing, another one for hunting, then there was a third one that was kind of like a youth expo. There was a lot of outdoor stuff. They had the kayaks outdoors. There was kind of some off-roading. You could test all the quads and the, the side-by-sides there, so that was pretty cool to see all that going. Just a really good time. It was We had a lot of fun. Walking around the show uh, in the fishing hall, though, we did get to meet Steve Cooper from In Deep on the Delta. I'll put a link to his channel in the upper right-hand corner of the screen. Steve is a local YouTuber here to the California Delta. He does weekly fishing reports. If you're not following Steve yet, please go check him out. His channel is In Deep on the Delta, weekly fishing reports. He also does a lot of cool bait reviews and things like that. I've gotten lots of cool tips from watching uh, Steve's channel. So go check out Steve over there. First booth I'll give a kind of a nice shout out to is uh, Stealth Sticks. I got to spend quite a bit of time hanging out there with Randy McCabe over at Stealth Sticks and he was walking me through the whole manufacturing process, how they start and build their rods from the ground up. Really, really awesome. He really got me hooked. He was showing me, I believe the rod model we were looking at was called the Booty. Setting this up for like a bladed jig or a, a smaller to mid-sized crankbait. I think it was a 3 8 a 3 quarter ounce rod. It was a 7.3 if I remember correctly. And you know, I was holding it with a half ounce jig and this rod felt amazing. So uh, definitely gonna look into Stealth Sticks. Maybe you'll see some of them a little more here on the channel in the future. But Randy, if you're watching this, thank you. Appreciate all the time you took talking about your fishing rods with us today. Really appreciate that. Another booth we got to stop at, which was definitely one of our favorite booths, was the Active Catch booth. So we got to meet Garrett Steele. I hope I'm pronouncing that right, but Garrett took the time to walk us all the way through his booth and with this brand new crankbait that he has. In fact, I loved it so much I ordered one, so now I'm on the wait list to get one. But Garrett has this amazing idea where he has a crankbait and there's a little socket in the back of it, so that way you kind of fill it up with your oil-based scent, so as the crankbait's running it through the water it slowly leaks scent out behind it it's pretty amazing every single bait needs to be 3d printed because you can't like you know form the mold that's needed to make the shape it's a really cool concept and i think he is taking some pre-orders on his website it is a little bit of a wait but definitely go check it out and i also picked up one of his craws he has there. Now, if you noticed from the footage earlier, he does amazing paint jobs. So he's a local custom crankbait painter here out of Elk Grove, California. Definitely give him a shout. I picked this one up here. I believe this is called the Devil Craw, if I'm not mistaken. So really, really amazing paint jobs. And I believe these are only like $8.99. I, I almost even hate sending you over to the website because I want to buy some more. So I'm probably going to order some more. So give me a chance, save some for me, will you? But go on, check out Garrett. He hand paints all of these in-house. Pretty awesome stuff. So active catch, definitely going to be seeing some more of these crankbaits on the channel once the crankbait bite picks up here in the spring. And last, but certainly not least by any means, and in fact, this is the booth that led us to the color match that we're doing right now, is the G-Rat booth. So we stopped by the G-Rat booth, got to check out some of the new baits they have coming up, and actually we got our hands on a bunch of the new fighting fish. And uh, these were new releases, and I had no idea. We came home, Eric and I were looking at Tackle Warehouse, and they don't even get these until February 22nd, and we were able to grab three colors at the show that aren't even on Tackle Warehouse. So pretty awesome what this is here is it's a it's a kind of a hybrid skirted crankbait square bill if you will it's a pretty amazing bait this is it here in the bluegill color this is what we're going to be color matching today this is actually a combination of three skirts it's a three quarter ounce square bill design and if i can get all of the skirt out of the way it just has a giant gaff of a hook on the back of it here so Pretty cool, silent, three quarter ounce design. So we picked it up in the bluegill. We have the super bug right here, which is kind of a dark green pumpkin, purplish kind of color. We also picked it up in the shiny shad. 
So this was going to be great for stripers, we're told. And then last but not least, the chartreuse shad picked that up as well. So some great bass catching colors. Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot the other one is the craw. And you might notice we got something on the bottom of it there. That's right. We got ourselves an epic whip wad. I was thinking on the drive home, you know, what's a good trailer that I could fit on the back of this right here? And I came home, pulled out my fireball version of the epic whip wad, put it on there. It was an exact color match. It fits on there beautifully. This is the solid port whip wad. No hook slot inside. We flipped it over so we get a solid version of it. So again, fireball color matches up perfect with that fire crawl, and this is going to be deadly in the spring. Crankbait action, that whip wad tail is just going to be flapping all over back there in the water. So I think this is going to be really, really good. If you want to see the fireball recipe, let me know in the comments below. This is a color match to X Zone's fireball, and we can do that in a future video. But you got to let me know down below if you want to see it. I mean, if you don't let me know what you want to see, I don't know what color matches to do. So you all got to participate and let me know what colors you want to see. So for today's color match, we're going to go ahead and match this bluegill here. This is a pretty cool one and definitely one of the first ones I want to throw. We can see we have a purple and black skirt here. There's a lot of green pumpkin black flake skirting, but there's also blue highlight powder in there as well. We also have a hint of orange here right on the underside of the bill, making for a perfect bluegill combination. So we're going to attempt a bluegill color match, just something quick and dirty. And in fact, I don't even know the recipe that we're going to be doing yet. So future me who's editing the video is going to throw up the recipe on the screen right now so you can see all of the colors that you're going to need in order to build this bait along with us at home. So we're going to keep it real simple. For the base, we're going to go with Dead On Plastics Green Pumpkin. This is the, everybody has a green pumpkin. This is their version. It says so on their website. We're definitely going to be using some black flake here. I just have the generic Hobby Lobby glitter brand for the medium sized black flake because the Lure Works one that I have is the .015, which is just a little too small. So we're going to be using the medium black flake here. Then we're also going to be using the Lure Works Highlight Blue for the blue highlight inside of the green powder. Last but not least, and we're, we're going to kind of add this in slowly but surely, but I'm going to put a little bit of purple glitter and a little bit of orange glitter in there. Just, just a hint, just a pinch to give just, you know, a little bit of accent to the purple in the skirting as well as the orange on the underside of the belly. I think it'll look good. Primarily, it's going to be the green pumpkin with the uh, blue highlight and the black flake. That's going to be the primary. Most of the purple is going to come here from the skirt. But since the tail is what's going to be hanging out the back, I'm just going to want just a little hint of that purple and orange flopping around reflecting back there. So we'll add that to taste as we get to mixing. So what are we waiting for? Let's, let's get to mixing. So we have some fresh plastisol out of the microwave here. Everything is up to temperature. We're going to start with the Dead On Plastics Green Pumpkin. Now I definitely want this generally pretty thick so we're going to start with 20 drops. The Dead On Plastics colors are usually pretty thick so 20 drops should get us into a pretty good spot but I can already tell yeah, we're definitely going to have to go more, so let's add another 20 at least. Alright, so this puts us at 40 drops. Okay, now we're definitely starting to get somewhere. Starting to like that for sure. Let's take a look and see how this fits into our, our test mold here. Do a little bit of translucent, you know. I think I'm going to go more. We're going to go another 20. All right, so now we're 60 drops. Six zero, you can see we have a nice dark green pumpkin going here. Look at that. All right, now we're getting a little less opacity. I'm not starting to like that. Okay, I think that's where we want to be. I'm thinking that is where we want to be. That looks pretty dark. 
You can see we got thick on the spoon, but uh, a little bit darker. 20 more drops. All right, so now we're at 80. Eight, zero. 80 drops of dark. There, see, now we're starting to. Okay, okay. Now we're getting somewhere. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. A little less translucent up there. Yeah, that's what I'm liking right there. That is what I'm liking right there. Can you all see that? All right. Black flake. We'll do two sixteenths equals an eighth. Two eighths equal a quarter. Loaded up with black flake. That's one of the primary colors. This is basically a green pumpkin black flake. And then we're going to add those other colors in there. Oh yeah, there we go. Looking good. I'm kind of liking that right there. Quarter teaspoon total of black flake. Awesome. Awesome. Now, before we add in the uh, purple and the orange, I want to add in the blue highlight. So we're going to add a dash of this first. Make sure, make sure our spoon is clean. All right, so we're just gonna come in here. You don't need much. You don't need much, that's a half a sixteenth. Don't need much. I have learned with the powders, less is definitely more. Remember, with all these colorants, you can always add more, but you can't take it away once it's in there. Okay. I think we can go a dash more. So I think we can go another half, and we'll be pretty good. So I think we're looking 1 16th total of the blue highlight. The reason being is because that green pumpkin is pretty dark, and so the highlight's getting lost just a little bit, so I want a little bit more to bring it out because the blue highlight that's on the uh, the bait itself is pretty bright and pretty pronounced so when you look at it in different angles so I'm liking the look of that right there that's a good green pumpkin with a blue highlight on it right there when I tilt the knife can you all see it right there yeah look at that blue mixed in there perfect okay so looking at the bait, I think we're in a pretty good spot right now. I like where we're at with the green pumpkin. Now let's start with adding that purple in there. Again, don't forget to wipe off your spoons. This is 0.15, and again, we don't need much. I'm just gonna put a half a teaspoon of the purple in there and again let's see where that gets us can't really see much of it at all hopefully we didn't go too dark so we're going to put another half so 16th total 1 16th teaspoon total of the 0 0.015 purple and I'm liking where that's gotten us there beautiful and I think I want to add the exact same amount of the orange. So we're going to go with 1 16th of the orange as well. So one full 16th, in it goes. All right. I think we have our color, ladies and gentlemen. I think we have a color it's starting to thicken up a little bit so we got to heat it and get it in the vacuum chamber but look at that green pumpkin and blue with a little orange oh purple in there blue highlight black flake looks like a nice little bluegill color to me all right let's get the bubbles out and see where we're at There you go. Looks pretty good. 
blue, just that hint of purple, hint of orange. That's going to look good. Okay, here we go. Our plastisol is ready. We are reading 345, 341. I think we're good to go. And don't forget to glove up. Okay, injector's ready. Plastisol's ready. Bluegill. Here we go. Epic whip wad. Can't wait to see what these are going to look like on the back of those fighting fish baits. Definitely going to hold a little bit of pressure because this is the first time I'm injecting the mold here. So it's going to be a little bit cold, so that's fine. We're just going to hold pressure. Make sure to prevent any denting. That one kind of went quick. That was a little too fast. So uh, didn't mean to do that one that fast. We'll see how that middle one turns out. Again, holding pressure slightly there. Top that off. Let's top that back one off. And let's do a nice medium pace into the whip wad. There we go. That's much, much better right there. All right. And there we go. Ah! Okay. All right, these sprues are definitely ready. So we can take a look at these. And this will give us an idea of what we're working with. I think that turned out pretty good. Yeah, not too shabby. Looking good. I think that's going to work out nice. All right, moment of truth. 5.4 inch epic whip wad. Let's see how it does. And they're all coming out on the one side. That's beautiful. Oh, yeah, look at that. Would you look at that? I mean, I'm just going to leave that right there. Look at that match, huh? First try. Oh, that's going to look so good. Oh, it's going to look so good. Look at that. We did a great job. There's that green pumpkin with the black flake. Specks of orange, specks of purple in there, really showing off that bluegill. Look at that tail. The whip wad, I tell you, the tails in the whip wad, they're always a thing of beauty. Such a great mold, such a great design. Awesome, awesome. I mean, take a look, let me know. What do you think? Did we match it? I think it's a pretty sweet match. I think that's going to look amazing on the back of the bait. Let's get the rest of these poured and then we'll check out what it looks like all rigged up. everybody so what do you think hey if you ask me I think we did a pretty good job of matching up that bluegill color with that bluegill fighting fish bait this thing looks awesome this is gonna look like a giant bait of fish flowing through the water it's I can't wait to throw this I can't wait to throw this the fire crawl for the spring these are just gonna be absolutely killer baits Something not a lot of people are throwing. And look, if you want to know where to get these, if you don't know already, check the description down below. I always include links to all of the molds, all of the tackle that were used, these jigs right here, these crankbait jig hybrid thing, whatever you call it, it's awesome. There'll be tackle warehouse links for these too. So all the links are down below. Make sure you're reading the description. I think this is going to wrap it up for me. It's pretty late in the evening now. We went to the show. We found some custom baits. We brought them home. We color matched our custom baits. Today was a good day. So again, if you enjoyed the color match, hit the thumbs up button. If you have an idea for a color match that you want me to do, 
drop in the comments down below. If you like the content on the channel, hey, that subscription, don't forget, free all month long. I got that deal I worked out with YouTube just for all of you. So click that subscribe button. It's free. And hey, until next time, you all know who it is. Your friend on this end, Michael, out here around the Delta Slews, reminding you to keep on chucking. I'll get back with you.